We are celebrating the 10th anniversary of the Opportunity You Form and Fund. The vision of this network is the vision that so many loving adults, hardworking parents, and families of many different types and constructs sow into every day as they work in service of and in partnership with young people. It's the vision that my mom was working toward. We are working toward a future that we may not see realized today in its entirety, but it's a future that is inclusive, just, and equitable. There is no shortcut to helping young people tap into their promise and potential and to opportunity. But there might be jet fuel on the journey to that. We've come to believe that that jet fuel is belonging and meaning. 10 years in this space have been full of triumphs, as much trial as there can be with trying to reconnect millions of opportunity youth across the country. Knowing that the Aspen Institute for Opportunity Youth supports Thrive Chicago and our endeavors, our innovations, and that we have a place and an entity in which to go back to be innovative, to talk about ideas, to, and a network of people to help us think through things, it's, it just really means the world. Um, I, many, many moons ago, um, find myself as a young man needing an opportunity. And it was organizations like the organization I work with now that were there for me when I was 20, 21 years old, looking for a second chance, looking for an opportunity to make my family proud um, and to prove that I was more than my mistakes. We are here accompanied by some of our youth, some of our drummers, some of our folks that as we're navigating the craziness of this world, we tap into our healing practices and our cultures, right, to help ground us and help set a lot of the work that we do. What it means to me to be a part of Opportunity Youth, it means a lot. At first I was like not really feeling it. I'm like, it's just gonna be like another school and what can it help me with? But then I started to be a little more open-minded and talking to like, you know, Mr. Clark and different people like that. It taught me how to do it the right way that it could benefit me and just to show my peers so like, you can be doing the same thing too and they're here to help you and it's all about your success. Utilizing the term opportunity youth and redefining it as not a barrier, not as an excuse, but using it as a platform to really elevate your voice and, and learn about what we need to do. I've been able to teach my parents, which are now like 40, 45, um, what I learned you know, at 20, when I feel like it should have been the other way around, them teaching me and kind of like paving the way um, for me to like have a, a better future than what they had. Um, but then again, I feel like for the most part, a lot of people were in that survival mode. So what surprised me, it's that like how many people have continuously lived in survival mode for so many years and now um, we're able to like just take a step back, pause and say, I don't want to be in survival mode anymore. I shouldn't have to be in survival mode anymore. And getting the right education and the right platform, you can now thrive. Young people have the capacity to arrest our development in a moment so that we can experience the disequilibrium of the time and then learn new things. And what they taught me between 2.30 a.m. and 3 a.m. in the morning as I sat uh, trying as a clergy person to protect them with a clerical garb, my presence in front of police and behind tear gas was that ultimately they're the ones in charge and my job is to make sure that they have the space to do it. My vision for the next 10 years is there's no opportunity youth in a way where those young people who are the opportunity can flourish in their gifts.